I'm going for an interview. <laughs> interview. Where? What for? Wine bar. Waiting on, clearing away, emptying ashtrays, that sort of thing. He says if I'm satisfactory, he'll set me on straight away. Oh, let me look at you. <laughs> He's not going to set you undressed like that. And look at those nails. That's all right. There's a uniform. Well, there better be gloves with it or they'll all go down with salmonella. <laughs> look, I've got to go. Now, wait a minute. What, what are you going to say to him? I don't know. You don't know? What do you ought to know? I don't know what he's going to ask. You should be prepared for anything. Now, come here. Come here, sit down. Now, I'm doing the interview. Imagine I'm F.G. Fielding. Now, he's very good at interviews, very searching. Why do you want this job? For the money. Well, that's your first mistake. Don't mention money. It's a delicate subject. Keep off it. It's the truth. We're not dealing with the truth. We're dealing with interview technique. Dull cues are full of people who tell the truth. <laughs> Do you have any special skills? <laughs> well, say something. No, but I don't think you need any special skills for this job. Oh, that's great, isn't it? You've just told this bloke he's probably been in the trade all his life that he's got no special skills. <laughs> Cigarette? Oh, thanks. Don't take it. <laughs> Why not? Could be a trap. Just say you do smoke, but only occasionally and never near food. Drink? No, thank you. Oh, come on, Matthew. The bloke's just offered you a drink. There's no need to be antisocial. Oh, thanks. <laughs> like a drink? Only occasionally and never near food. <laughs> well, what is your health like? Fine. Good. At the moment. Just go over glandular fever and I still get these blinding headaches, but apart from... Wait a minute, wait a minute. You just said your health was good. You sound like a physical wreck. In fact, you're making a very bad impression. I wouldn't give you a job, and neither would F.G. Fielding. Not the way you're conducting yourself. You've got to sell yourself, Matthew. It's all right for you. You've got a job. Well, that doesn't make any difference. I have to sell myself every day. You mean to F.G. Fielding? What are you getting at? Well, all this week it's been F.G. Fielding this and F.G. Fielding that. All of a sudden he's wonderful. Even his daughter's blooming. <laughs> but I don't call that selling yourself. I call that crawling. I do not crawl. You're a yes man. I'm not. But you wouldn't disagree with him, would you? Well, I would if it was a matter of principle. Principle? If F.G. Fielding said it was a nice day, you'd agree with him, even if it was peeing it down. What did you say? Well, I'm not a yes man. I'll get that job on merit. I'm not asking any favours. A fair day's pay for a fair day's work, that's all I ask. I'm not selling my soul. I bow to no man. I value my independence too much. <laughs> he couldn't give me a lift down, could he? <laughs> Nice place, F.G. Yes, I usually drop in here at lunchtime. Good service. Tolerable house wine, and we won't be disturbed. Give us a chance to have a quiet chat about the future. Know what I mean, Henry? I think so, F.G. I've been watching you, Henry, and I like what I've seen. Thank you. Yes, the way you... prepared to stay late and finish the job, not worrying about what time you get home. Of course, you live alone, don't you? Uh, no family ties, no commitments. That's right. Yes, I like that. Shows you're 100% international. <laughs> and that's my department. Are you listening, Henry? Uh, yes. Had you been in my department, your work would have been recognised. <laughs> well, of course, you've always been under... Clark. What do you think of Clark? Well, he's uh, conscientious, have you? He's a pillock, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> he 
He's a conscientious pillock. <laughs> Dead wood, Henry. And when the reorganization comes along, you may find yourself absorbed into my department. And that, of course, would place you in my gift. I see. Now then, Squat, what's he doing out there? I beg your pardon? Looks a bit threatening early. I thought we might have rain by this afternoon. I don't want a weather forecast. Just take the order, will you? Right. Well, there's uh, Pizza Romana, the Sicilian, the Marinara, Napolitan, the Margarita, and the uh, speciality of the day, Pizza Quattro Stagione. We'll have two pizzas, Napolitana and a carafe of the housewife. Si. Thank you. Prego. Strange young man. I imagine he's mentally retarded. Two pizzas, Napolitana? Yes, uh, you were saying you lived alone, Henry. Henry? Yes? You live alone? Yes. Yes, of course, that always worries the board. They always think there's something... There's not something. Oh, no, no. No, I was divorced seven years ago. Once bitten, twice shy, after yes. Yes, that's how Harriet feels. Harriet? My daughter. Oh, yes. You remember, you met her at the sports day. You were in the sack race together. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. She said how much she enjoyed meeting you. Did she? Mm. It was nice to see her smile again after what that bastard did to her. Uh, which bastard's that? <laughs> her ex-husband. Uh, perhaps you met him. He used to work at International. Not anymore. I saw that. You mean... <laughs> I'm going to the outing to Stratford this year, Henry. Stratford? Yeah. Tame to the truth. Shakespeare. We are going. Oh, what a pity. I forgot to book. And I think all the seats have gone. Oh, well, why don't you have my ticket? What? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit nice for Harry to have some younger company for a change. Well, I'm not that young, F.G. I don't think well, Harry... Well, we'll ask her, shall we? I said I'd meet her here. Oh, good. Two feet in a politana. Oh, sorry, sir. I want to speak to the manager. Well, don't do that. It's my first day. And your last. No, it, it was an accident, F.G. You, you have this one. I'll have that. I don't mind. Sure, isn't it? Hardly marked, F.G. <laughs> Besides, it wasn't his fault exactly. No, no. I blame the parents. <laughs> well, you only have to look at him, see what sort of home he comes from. Oh, here's Harriet. Harriet. Hello. Harriet, you remember Henry? Oh, yes. I haven't seen you since we were in the sack together. Pardon? At sports day. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you Signorina. Oh, no. It was far too expensive to leave lying around. Oh, I didn't know it was real. Uh, of course it's real. Just take the order, will you? See. Si. I'll have the soup. Are you, uh, are you sure about the soup? The pizza's very nice. The soup's very good here. I'll have the soup. The soup di cipolli, presto. Harriet, I was just suggesting to Henry that he might like to take my ticket to the Taming of the Shrew. I, I do have a lot of work on at the moment. Oh, yes. That would be super. Well, I'm not too you sure. You don't have to make up your mind now. We'll, we'll talk about it. You must come over for dinner one night. Oh, super. What do you say, Henry? Super. <laughs> oh. Get Don't it. worry, I'll get it clean. Well, it's not your responsibility, Henry. So, oh, yes, it is. You see, he's my... He's my... He's my son. <laughs> what? Yes, and like me, he's been a little too eager to please. Just send the bill to me, Harry. Oh, and uh, this is for the meal. Keep the change. Grazie. I mean, thanks, Dad. <laughs> well, I'd better be going. I've got a great deal of work on at the moment. Oh, and uh, I think we'd better forget the taming of the shrew. I've been through all that. <laughs> Don't fancy it again. <laughs> back early. I got the sack. <laughs> so he did complain? No. The three other people did. <laughs> it frightens me. It only lasted a few hours. Perhaps you're right. 
Perhaps I am unemployable. No, don't look at it like that. At least you got the job. Against competition. If you can get one job, you can get another. Dad, I was the only one who could get into the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind. Since you're not going to make a waiter, you might as well get back to your studies. Right. Thanks for sticking up for me. That's all right. I found some change. Where do I put it? <laughs> put it in the music box on the top shelf behind the vase. There's a secret compartment under the lid. Aren't we going to a lot of trouble? Do it, Enid, if you don't want to be deafened by an electric guitar. The small music box? Well, that's where I'm putting it at the moment. The one that plays Little Brown Jug. You might think of looking there. Oh, you'll need a chair. Oh, and make sure he's out of the room. We don't... Thank <laughs> you.